In this demonstration, we're going to examine retrieving and sending email from a PHP application. To send the email, we're going to be using the simple mail transfer protocol, SMTP. To retrieve emails, we're going to be using IMAP, the Internet Mail Access Protocol. Whenever we're developing functionality for our application, we need to be thinking about how we might be able to reuse that functionality in the future. In this case, I've created an email reader class that can be reused in other applications for using IMAP to retrieve emails from, in this case, a Gmail account. So let's go look at my email reader class. The email reader class constructor loads configuration values that identify the server to which to connect, then performs the connection, and then loads the inbox. Now this is a simplified class, so it's not a full function email reader. It will retrieve all of the messages in the inbox for the email account to which it's connected. So in load configuration values, I'm loading the user, the port, the password, and the server to which to connect. Then I call the connect method. And to connect to a server, we call IMAP open. And this creates a connection to the server that we're then storing in a class variable called con for connection. And we're going to use that connection when we call inbox to load the messages from the email server. So in our inbox function, we call IMAP num messages. This tells us how many messages are in the inbox for the account to which we're connected. And we identify that account by passing the connection to the IMAP non message method. We store the number of messages returned by this function in our local variable message count. We're creating an array in which to store the returned messages. Then we're going to loop through all of the messages in the inbox for the email account that we're connected to. And as we're looping through, we're going to be assigning to our array the different parts of the email message. So we're going to get the IMAP header info for the message that we're currently reading, in this case, controlled by the loop variable i. Then we're going to get the body of that message by calling imap underscore body. Now the imap underscore body returns more than just the body of the message. It also returns encoding information. So rather than parse that imap body return value, which I call body raw. I then call IMAP fetch body, passing the connection and the message that we're currently reading from the inbox. And I tell it I want it in format one, which is a text format. But then I call IMAP fetch body again because we also have the option of retrieving the message in HTML format, which is option two. And then because we want to get all of the information associated with this message in the inbox, we're going to retrieve IMAP fetch structure for that message. And again, we're storing all of that in an array and then passing it to another array called n. So n is an array of arrays, a two-dimensional array. And when this loop concludes after reading all of the messages in the inbox for the account that we're connected to, then it will assign this local variable n to our class variable inbox. So now we have the messages local to our system. We've read them all from the email server and we can do what we need to do with those messages locally. And we access those local messages with the get message 
function. The get message function of this class expects the message number for which we're interested and retrieves that array from the inbox two-dimensional array and returns it to the calling program. So remember, the inbox array is an array of arrays. And the array that the inbox array is holding for any one message contains all of this information about the email message that we have access to within our calling program. So in our calling program, we first include the necessary external files. Then we create an object of type email reader simply to demonstrate the structure of the message array that's returned for message one from the email reader. I've done a print R, which is going to dump the structure of that array. Then we ask how many messages are in the inbox. And we've provided an interface method for that within our email reader class. Get inbox count, the method within the email reader class, provides the interface for a user to get the number of messages being stored in the inbox two dimensional array. So we use that as our loop control in the for loop, and then we're simply going to print out the contents of the message. Inside the loop, we're retrieving the message structure from the email reader class by calling get message and providing the loop control variable so that we will iterate over each of the messages. And what we're asking for is the header structure for that message. Again, recall that in the email reader class, we are storing the information returned by IMAP header info in the header array index. So now retrieving the message and that header index we can ask for specific attributes that are associated with the IMAP header info. So the question is, how do we know what attributes are available from the IMAP header info structure? And the answer to that is the internet. So I've performed an internet search looking for IMAP header info, and I'm able to review all of the properties that are available from this structure. And all of these properties are available to me from the header index in my message array in my email reader class. So in my loop, I'm asking for the from address, and I'm asking for the date, and I'm asking for the subject from that header info structure. There are other things I could ask for. There is a long list of available properties from, from the IMAP header info structure. But these are what I'm interested in for this example. Then again, going back to our email reader class, I've stored the result of fetch body with the option to retrieve the body as text in the array index body text. And body HTML contains the same data. However, it is in HTML format because I've put option two in the IMAP fetch body function. So here in my loop, when I retrieve the message from the email reader class, I'm asking for the body of the message in text format. And again, on line 29, I'm asking for that same data, but in HTML format. This may look a little different to you because this call to get message returns an array. And because it returns an array, I can access the associative array key header or body text or body HTML because this is an array. It's an associative array. It's the associative array we built here. All I've done is compacted the code so that rather than 
building an array here within the loop, just using the array returned by the function call, and then accessing the key for that array called header and body text and body HTML. There's another way we could have written this. We could have captured the array separately and then in, instead of calling the function and accessing the key for that associative array that's returned by the function, we could have simply replaced our function call with, with the array variable. That probably looks more familiar to you than the way that I've written it here, which is more compact and, and is more efficient because we're not creating an array for each message as we pass through the loop. Remember, when we make this function call, the function returns an array. It returns that array by value, which means it must be copied into the local inbox array here so that we can use it in our echo statement here. What I've done by writing the array access this way is saved the creation and copy of the array every time through the loop. So let's see how this executes. Our return from the print R, the dump of one of the message structures returned from the get message call to our email reader class is this array. And it's again an array of arrays. So we can examine this array to determine what values are available to us within the message that was retrieved from the server. Then our get inbox count function returns and we get the printout. There are three messages in the inbox. So we're going to loop through this for structure three times, retrieving each of the messages from the inbox. And here is the output of the three messages. This is message number one, this is message number two, and this is message number three. Then we close the connection to the email account. The key to accessing an email account through IMAP is to have the appropriate server configuration information, that's number one, so that you can connect to that email server and retrieve the emails. Then it's understanding the structures that are returned from the call to the IMAP functions like header info and body and fetch body. There are others we haven't talked about. There's an IMAP search and there's IMAP functions for anything that you want to do with an email account. So this email reader class is very basic. However, you could easily expand it to include searchability and other functionality by calling the appropriate IMAP functions. And don't be intimidated by the functions because if we need information about the structure and the properties available from the functions, look them up and review the data that is accessible via that structure returned by the function call. Thank <laughs> you.